Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I kind of thought, hey, why not take all of my PC build videos from last year and combine it into one massive like marathon of PC builds throughout 2020. And I decided, hey, you know, it's the end of the first month of January, first month of 2020. And, you know, why not give you guys a little jump start to last year? I know a lot of people are new here. The channel this month has increased like we've gotten 500 new subscribers and I figured hey you know maybe they haven't seen my old PC build videos so without further ado let's get into it and also sorry about the audio um <coughs> I just bought this microphone and none of these videos use that microphone <coughs> hey guys Chris here welcome back to another video um this month we have another PC build where we have this pretty good for the price PC um it rocks a RX 560. I wanted to mention right here, um, it is an RX 560, but for some reason in the entire video, you know, all my receipts or whatever, my script, I kept typing RX 550. It is a 560, I just don't know how to read. Uh, i5 fourth generation, 8 gigs of RAM, so it's pretty like, you know, entry level to mid range PC, depending on the way you look at it. And especially for the price where it's coming in at around $150. Definitely good for the price. So let's go ahead and get into how I got the parts, um, the build process, the benchmarks, and yeah. But before this video starts, I do want to mention only about 1% of you guys are actually subscribed. So if you guys actually subscribe to my channel, it really helped me out. I do take a lot of time making these videos. And yeah. Okay, so getting into it. First off, we have our CPU and other board um the cpu was pulled out of a computer um just kind of estimating all the other parts that were inside of the computer we brought the cpu down to three dollars for an i5 4460 is a four core four thread cpu which is still pretty good um it was pulled out of a dell dimensions i think it was computer that you can actually see in one of my part hunt videos um along with that we have this eBay motherboard. It was an HP ProDesk something. It's a LGA 1155 motherboard and I got it for $15. And it supports our processors, you know, it's a i5 fourth generation. It should support it fine. Um, next up, we're going to go ahead and start installing the bracket for the cooler. Our cooler we went with was this, you know, very basic but okay cooler. Um, it's an RGB cooler. Um, it's fine for our CPU. It didn't actually have the um, right brackets because the HP motherboard proprietarily has like these little, they have like their own weird little standoff. So I had to like improvise and, you know, actually screw down the bracket to the standoffs, which required some weird kind of screw bits that kind of belongs on SSDs and hard drives, but eh, it was fine. So I went ahead, installed the cooler, and you know, tucked it in, did a little bit of cable management, and then it was time for the RAM. So the RAM was some pretty generic, you know, <laughs> the main components here are actually definitely very generic, but it's a one stick of eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM running at 1600 megahertz. Um, eight gigabytes is gonna be fine for this build, especially, you know, considering this is supposed to be under the $125 budget. Um, next up is our case. It's an NWIN ATX case. Um, it's definitely an or case due to how many freaking drive brackets there are, geez. But um, it came with a red LED fan, which I thought, you know, added a little bit of spice to the build, kind of like the RGB added on into it, which you're gonna see more of in a moment here. but. You know, we went ahead, checked out the case, seemed to be fine. Um, I also put this little, like, dual USB bracket PCIe thing into the PC, you know, just to give us some more USB plugs, but it didn't actually end up working, so I just took it out later. So the case ended up being $20, but it also came with this power supply, which added an extra $10 to it. It's uh, Elias 550 watt. It's a very basic power supply, just like the rest of the build, which I, I, I still think is going to be fine for this build. It doesn't draw too much power. So went ahead, installed that. Went in pretty smoothly, actually. So I think something really cool about this case is probably the way you actually can mount a drive. So I actually ran out of SATA cables when I was doing this, so I couldn't really use any of the drive bays. But 
on the top of the case, you can actually install an SSD at the very top, which I thought was pretty cool. And it had some like, you know, SATA cable attached and stuff. So I was didn't really, you know, need an another SATA cable, which kind of helped me good because I, I was fresh out. Like I'm completely out right now. So with the hard drive in, we can go ahead and put our motherboard inside. I turn the motherboard on the side, that way you know I can get a better angle for you guys. And also because it is kind of hard to actually screw it in, mostly due to the fact that it's a micro ATX motherboard in an ATX case, so it kept trying to slide down and stuff. Unfortunately though, it didn't come with an IO shield, which is kind of sad because aesthetically it doesn't look as good when I'm trying to you know flip it on Facebook. But yeah, it went in pretty good. I went ahead, connected the SATA cables. I tried connecting the USB stuff, but you know, the external one, I didn't really help that much. But I connected USB 3 ports, um, basic USB, um, connected the power cable. The, the um, CPU power was actually hard to get in because it was in a weird spot on the motherboard. So I have to actually route it under where our graphics card is in order to actually get it to um, stretch far enough to go in. It was actually not as tight as I thought it was going to be, but you know, it, it did okay. Finally, we have the FFX RX 550 2GB. It's a very, very low power graphics card. It doesn't have that much capability, but in this build, it, it's going to fit fine, basically. Um, it cost me 30 bucks, so I think that was pretty good. And yeah, it, it's not very big, so you know it doesn't get in the way of anything. And it covers our CPU power pretty well. It only takes one six pin power connector, which, you know, it, it doesn't have that much weight, doesn't have that much power. So I think for the graphics card, it's actually fine for this build. And yeah, it was ready. Finally, the last thing I tackled was some cable management. I put some zip ties in the back of the case. Um, I also attached this LED strip that cost me an extra $8, but you know, it made the build aesthetically pleasing and it brought our total all the way to $120 for this PC. So now that we have the RGB strip installed, let's go ahead and turn this thing on. And there we go. Okay. It's on, you know, sighting up. So I'm going to go ahead, close it, you know, tie it up. And now we have our PC built. So moving on to benchmarks, we tested some games here. Um, I completely removed Apex out of here. So we're down to, I think, four games, which still fine you know it gets you a pretty okay idea of what the performance of the pc is like but we're going to go ahead and start off with cinebench r20 where in cinebench we actually get a score of 1185 which i think is okay once you hit like the thousand range i think you're pretty good when it comes to the cpu um moving on now to csgo so CSGO actually got an average of 73, which is kind of low compared to like our usual builds around the $100 price point. Um, we got a minimum of 50 and a max of 330. So I guess that's okay. If you really wanted it to, you know, perform, you know, nothing going below 60, I'd probably recommend turning down the settings. Um, next up is Fortnite, where in Fortnite we get an average of 81 FPS, which is better than I really expected. <laughs> We get a minimum of 57 and a max of 123. Again, if you you know if you want better FPS, you could probably just turn the settings down to low. We're testing a medium right now, but I think for 81 FPS average is pretty good. Um, next up, we have Minecraft, where in Minecraft we get an average of 186, a minimum of 88, and a maximum of 414. Next up we have Rocket League, where we get an average of 64 FPS, a minimum of 42, and a max of 72. So it does pretty good when it comes to, you know, like some basic games. It doesn't do great, but for $120, I think it does pretty good. Um, I also tested a couple other things just to get more of a, you know, perspective on what it can do. Um, I tested out a 10-minute render on Adobe Premiere Pro with some, like, color grading options and, you know, like some mid-range video editing and for a 10 minute clip it took 17 minutes and 51 seconds compared to my main pc which took about 12 but i think it's you know it's, it's still it's still in there now the final benchmark i tested was 3d mark time spy stream but the weird thing is i couldn't actually get it installed on the computer 
it, it was having like some weird issue where it wouldn't let me actually install it from Steam. So these are some results from another person who had pretty much the exact same setup. Um, it, he got an average of 1,304, a GPU score of 1,191, and a CPU score of 2,827. So it's about, compared to my main PC, probably half as good. Um, it's still okay. Like I, I definitely would say like if this were like a gift for someone who's never been into PCs before, it'd be an okay gift. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So let's go ahead and move on to like final thoughts and wrap this up. Well, guys, if you can see, like this PC is pretty good. Like there's not really anything wrong with it except you have to press F1 when you first turn it on. But I think other than that, this PC is actually really good for like you know entry level to mid-range gaming um it is really good in 1080p it gives everyone a 60 fps advantage and yeah i think that's about it um if you guys did enjoy the video go ahead hit the like button subscribe if you guys want to see more on the channel um my name is chris see you on the next video and bye hey guys chris here welcome back to another video um camera quality probably bad right now um everything bad right now the cat's meowing um so this video i kind of messed up um the footage of the b-roll for the computer got it got completely like destroyed like it is completely corrupt and it's just not working so um i do have a bunch of pictures of the computer but at this point i've already sold it so this is kind of like the worst time for the b-roll to kind of just like leave on us um but yeah so i think that being said let's go into the video let's check out the specs and stuff and um yeah let's see this pc build Okay, so this PC did need some requirements. Um, first off, it needs to be overclockable. It needs to be cheap, and realistically, it just needs to look pretty good. So originally, I did want to do like a Ryzen theme build, but quickly realized that Ryzen has kind of gotten a little bit expensive on like the used market than what it usually is, and the cheap stuff, like the AliExpress stuff that I can get for like dirt cheap, wouldn't get here in time for the video. So. I decided we're not gonna do Ryzen. Um, I found this deal on Facebook Marketplace for a CPU motherboard RAM and graphics card combo, which was actually great because it was the base to our system. They were originally listing it for 250, so I kind of sent in a low ball because it was kind of older hardware, and I said that I could do like 120. They said sure, so we ended up getting a i5 2500K. 16 gigs of ddr3 ram and asus lga 1155 motherboard a corsair 120 millimeter aio and finally a gtx 1050 so for my typical pc builds you know we tend to have a little bit stronger of a gpu um so this one's kind of going to be a little bit more weak compared to what i've done in the past um the next thing we needed was a case to fit all this I found a cool looking ATX case called the Aerocool Cyclone RGB. It's a pretty cool looking case. I definitely like the design, especially considering it has a PSU basement, and that cost me a good $50. Next up is a power supply. I ended up going with the cheapest, the dirt cheap power supply that I could find on Amazon. It was a 500 watt Apivia power supply. Now, in my experience, they do make good enough power supplies, like they'll last for like low power builds like this one um as long as you're not like trying to put like a beefy graphics card in there you'll you should be fine but yeah i normally wouldn't cheap out on a power supply but this one was less than 25 dollars and it fit into our budget so i just went with that one finally i added two up here fans to help add some rgb into the build which cost around an extra 12 dollars so for building the pc you might notice that i'm not in like my typical area that i'm usually building a pc in that's because I was getting a bunch of stuff moved today and had to go into a different area to actually build the PC. So, I guess, excuse that. <laughs> now, I started by putting the CPU in the motherboard, of course, like how all builds start off. It's been a while since I built an, in an ATX motherboard, or an ATX case for that matter. But installing our RAM was pretty easy. It's blue, which doesn't really match our, you know, basic color scheme. But the case kind of darkens it. You can't really see the RAM 6 once they're inside the computer. It might have like a little slight glare, but you can't really tell like that it doesn't match. Um, I think that 
taking the case out to organize it was the next step. Um, I had to put all the like front panel connectors and stuff routed through the back of the case to kind of keep everything nice and neat. Um, next up, I installed the motherboard into the case, but I still need to get the power supply in there. So I put it in behind the PSU cover and I screwed it in, but I left it there so I can move on to other stuff like the AIO. Um, I needed to install the up here fans in order to get the AIO installed because I was putting the one of the RGB fans on the AIO. So once I finished doing that, I installed a ADATA 240 gigabyte SSD that I got for about $26. And so far the build's looking pretty good. I plugged in some cords and now all that we really need left is our GPU. So I got the GTX 1050 out and I went ahead, slid it right in, and it went in perfectly. It's a little bit small. It's one of the like mini type graphics cards, but you know, it still fits during build and I definitely do like it. Finally, I finished doing some cable management, closed the side panels, and we were done getting this build set up. Alrighty, now we're into the benchmark section. So I tested a few games. I also added some stuff like Cinebench and Premiere Pro in here just to get an idea of how the system performs. So let's start off with Cinebench. We got a score of 1151, which is actually pretty good for a CPU like this. Um, it matches with, you know, similar bills that we have in this price point. Um, next up, we'll go ahead and go into CSGO. Where in CSGO we get an average of 163 FPS, a minimum of 99, and a max of 323. Next up, we're going to go into Call of Duty Warzone, where we get an average of 61, so we do average 60 FPS. We get a minimum of 32 and a max of 85. So we can definitely handle Warzone, not at like the best settings, but if you were to turn down some things, you could probably get like a more stable 60 FPS. Next up is Minecraft. Now in Minecraft we got an average of 160 FPS, a minimum of 108, and a max of 395. So it definitely runs Minecraft pretty well. Let's go ahead and get into Fortnite. In Fortnite, typically, you know, my computer builds tend to not really perform that well in things like Fortnite. Um, we got an average of 158, a minimum of 63, and a max of 208. So this one kind of like performed a lot better than I was expecting personally. Next up, we're going to go into Rocket League, where we get an average of 178, a minimum of 151, and a max of 215. Next up, I also benchmarked TimeSpy. Um, we got an average of 1934, we got a GPU score of 1828, and a CPU score of 2866. Finally, I did a 10 minute run on Premiere Pro, where it took 8 minutes and 15 seconds to render a 10 minute video which definitely pretty good. So normally I'd have like, you know, some B-roll of me like saying now making the outro, but the outro also got deleted. So that's lovely. Um, I think with that being said, guys, if you guys did enjoy, go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe if you guys want to see a new video next week. And yeah, see you guys later. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today, this is the new 2020 $200 gaming PC. This PC is equipped with an i7, a GTX 960, and we only paid $200 to build all this. So this video, I'm gonna go through the parts, I'm gonna go through the benchmarks, the usability of the PC. Um, this one compared to our um, $200 PC from I think November, actually has like more customizable RGB controls, um, more colors, and it actually performs a lot better. <laughs> So if you're excited for this video, go ahead and click the like button, subscribe, and let's get into this. So let's start off with our processor. For our processor, I've chosen the i7-3770. I got this on a deal with Craigslist, a part with a B75 gigabyte motherboard for a total of $50. Next up, if you guys saw my last parts hunt, you guys saw that I got about 24 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM and a 16 gigabyte kit of that would take it to seven dollars for 16 gigabytes of ddr3 our cooler is the hyper 212 evo um 
I got this for $14. Our case is the Deep Pool Matrix X 30 case. I got that for $27 on Amazon. Our graphics card is the MSI GTX 960 4GB edition. That was $50. Our power supply was an EVGA 450BQ, which is a 450 watt power supply that I got for $20. For our SSD storage, we have an ADATA 240GB SSD for $28 that I got on a deal on Amazon. And for mass storage, we have a 1TB Seagate Barracuda hard drive for $10. Just to add on to the total of the build, I also got a random 1 meter RGB strip for $10. We go over budget a little bit on this build. Um, unfortunately, we ended up having a total of $216, but it's not that much above the budget. And if you took out the one meter strip, it would bring us down to $206, and we don't exactly need the one terabyte Seagate hard drive. So if we deleted those two things, it would bring the build up to $196. But yeah, so now we've talked about the parts, let's go into the building process. So the build process was actually pretty easy. I went ahead and put the i7 inside the motherboard, but I did notice before actually putting it inside that a lot of the pins were bent. This made me freak out, so I went ahead and tested it and the system still worked. So I actually realized that when I got the motherboard, the guy said that the USB 3.0 ports don't work. Now that could be due to a broken pin. And now that makes sense to me why the USB isn't working because the pins on the motherboard are actually just bent. Then I went ahead and put on the Hyper 212 cooler. I didn't install the fan because it was going to be hard to get the RAM inside there with the fan on anyways. So I put it on the cooler and then I turned the motherboard to the side and put on both of our 8GB sticks of DDR3 RAM. I went ahead and set that all to the side because after installing the fan I was ready to go ahead and start building in the case. So I took out my EVGA power supply and I put it inside the case, made sure I route all the cables through the back. Then I unscrewed the 140mm fan that was at the rear of the case because first off I'm going to be putting an RGB fan in there and second it just gets in the way when installing a motherboard so I figured hey I'm just going to get rid of it. Before I actually put the motherboard in the case, I was sure to route the power supply cable under the motherboard. That way I could get the cable for the CPU up there because there's actually no mounting holes for it at the top of the case. So after getting that in, I decided to screw in our RGB fan and we were ready to start doing something else. So I started routing the fan cable through the back of the motherboard, both of them, and then I was getting ready to start routing more cables, that way I could plug in our front panel IOs. So I plugged in the USB 3.0 first, then our 24 pin ATX cable. This was really, really hard to get in, just due to like the way that the case was positioned to the motherboard. Um, eventually I did get it in though after about like five minutes of messing with it and I used a zip tie to close the USB 3.0 cable and the ATX cable together because that USB 3.0 cable also had a 2.0 connector on it which I found weird. I think it might be for power or something but I'm not too sure. It worked fine without it. So at this point I decided I was going to start mounting the drives. The SSD was kind of hard to mount because it didn't like sit all the way which I found weird but then I went ahead and screwed in our Seagate one terabyte hard drive and I started plugging in stuff. Oops. Okay, three, two, one. Then I started plugging in the SATA power cables while at the same time trying to do a little bit of cable management in the back, which was pretty hard to do. The case isn't very great for cable management, but for $27, it was pretty, pretty fine. Um, I went ahead and plugged the SATA cables into the motherboard and we were ready to install our final piece, the graphics card. Installing the GPU is pretty simple. I had like a weird thought that it wasn't going to look right just due to how like longer the GPU is compared to the motherboard. But from the side view that most people would be looking at their PC from, it looked fine. 
and I went ahead and wrapped the power supply cables back under the case and I was pretty much ready. Only other thing I did then was actually install our RGB strip that I got on eBay. RGB strip actually was pretty pretty secure compared to $100 PC build. That one, the like I guess adhesive wasn't good for the metal or something and it just wasn't working. And at the end I tried doing a little bit of cable management. I did not great. <laughs> um, I actually had to quite literally sit on the front or the back panel to get it to close all the way. So I will not be opening this PC back up. <laughs> but after I finished that, I was ready to go ahead and plug everything in and turn on the PC. And our end result was beautiful. I It was so, so beautiful. And for $200, this is a really crazy looking computer, especially for that kind of money. So now that we finished building the PC, let's do some benchmarks. All right, so we are now at the benchmarking portion of the video, and we're going to start off with Cinebench R20 on our $200 gaming PC with the i7-3770. You can actually see that it gets a score of almost 1400 coming in at 1398. And my main PC gets a score of 2835, so it's about estimated like half as good as my main PC. And I think anything personally over like 600 score on Cinebench R20 would be good for like entry level, maybe even mid range gaming. So it gives me some hope for the benchmarks here. So to get into an actual game, we're going to start off with CSGO at 1080p max settings. I've actually recently did a new benchmarking over my main PC, which is why these numbers might not be as consistent to previous videos. So on 1080p max settings, we get an average of 147, a low of 96, and a high of 330. On my main PC consisting of a Ryzen 5 2600 and an R9-380X 4 gigabyte model, we get an average of 182, a low of 131, and a high of 347. In Fortnite 1080p medium settings, on our $200 gaming PC, we actually get a higher score than my main computer. We get an average of 141, a low of 81, and a high of 199. And on my main PC, keep in mind they're at the exact same setting, my main PC gets say, an average of 122, a low of 79, and a high of 179. So as you guys can see, it actually outperforms my main PC, which is kind of crazy. Next up, we have Minecraft at 1080p maximum settings. We have a score of 373, a low of 168, and a high of 1000, which is kind of cool. Um, my main PC seems to still win in this case by getting a score of 517 FPS, 258 on the low end, and 824 on the high end which I feel like the high scores don't really matter in this game because you can literally look up into the sky and get 5,000 FPS. So I wouldn't go too hard based on what that says. Our next game is Rocket League, which this one actually comes in really close to my main PC with an average of 129 FPS, a low of 105 FPS, and a high of 106 FPS while my main PC only gets a average of 130 FPS, which is one FPS more, a low of 109 and a high of 184. So it's actually doing some good competing when it comes to my main PC. Um, the final game that we had tested in today's benchmarking turns out to be Apex Legends at 1080p high settings. We have a score of 64 FPS with a low of 40, and a high of 144. On my main PC, this one actually still takes the cake with a average of 79 FPS, a low of 66 FPS, and a high of 105 FPS. So as you can see, my main PC is still doing pretty good in most of the games, only really being beaten out by like Fortnite and such. So I think that's still good.
for actual like um, aesthetic benchmarkings, we have 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme with our GPU score, our average score, and our CPU score. So for a $200 gaming PC, we have an average score of 2433 with the GPU scoring 2288 and the CPU scoring 3808 which means that the GPU is actually outperforming the CPU, which seems to be the same case when you compare it to my main PC with a score of 3152, and GPU score of 2925, and a CPU score of 5629. Our final test that we actually did today, I decided to actually kind of even out the rendering on my new benchmarking tool. I recently just got a new SSD for this type of thing, and as you can see in Premiere Pro 2020 with color and effects on a 1080p clip at 60 FPS renders on $200 gaming PC in 12 minutes and 21 seconds while my main PC only renders it at 12 minutes and 6 seconds. So it's about a 10 to 15 second difference and it's actually competing really well on my main PC. And I think that's actually pretty cool as it's only about a fifth of the price at the time of building. So as you can see guys, this PC performs great. It has great performance and a lot better than our $200 gaming PC build. In fact, it holds its own against my main PC which is equipped with an i5-2600, 16 gigs of RAM and a R9 380X. In fact, beating it in some scenarios. But anyways guys, um, that's been it for this video. If you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe if you guys want to see more on the channel. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching. And yeah, this PC is going to go to a great home soon. Bye. Well, hopefully you guys like my new, like, I guess, setup. Um, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing off the $100 gaming PC that I quite literally build for just over $100. We're gonna go ahead, build the PC, obviously. We're gonna run some benchmarks. I'm gonna give you guys an overview at the end of the video. So I guess now we can get into the build process and see you guys then. So when it comes to the parts, we'll start with the case. <clears throat> Found this guy on OfferUp just giving this thermal take v20 cube case away for free it was really dirty so i spent some time cleaning it and for a 70 dollar case it's pretty flexible while i was cleaning it i was kind of dismantling it a lot so i found out i was actually able to change the panel orientation to make it more of a classic design you know anyways you can still see a little bit of dust on the panel and it was really making my asthma act up, so I just gave up on that. <laughs> um, for the CPU and motherboard, I found them both on eBay. For a total, it cost me $31 for an i5-2400 and an LGA-1155 motherboard. Um, the motherboard only has two RAM slots, so I can only use two sticks, which made my RAM pickings a little bit picky, I guess. For RAM, I found a 2x4 gigabyte kit of DDR3. I asked this guy on Leco or OfferUp what he could do if I gave him $15. I said I wanted 8 gigabytes of RAM. And he said either he could get me one stick of 8 or two sticks of 4. So I obviously went to two sticks for 4 because I wanted to have a dual channel configuration. It cost me 15 bucks. So Right now, we're at about $46. For the hard drive, if you guys remember my, um, what was it? I think it was my $200 PC build. Um, my aunt gave me a hard drive from, from her old computer. She actually just bought a new computer recently, and an uh, accident happened with the computer, and the hard drive just wasn't working in there. So I went ahead and bought an SSD for her, and it just worked and she let me take the one terabyte hard drive for free for the power supply I saw a guy on Facebook marketplace selling a bunch of power supplies some 900 watts some modular um, it was a variety and I also saw this 520 80 plus model 
So I offered 20 bucks. It was an anti power supply, 520 watts, 80 plus gold efficiency. And he said he'd bring it to me. He probably only bring it all the way out to where I was because there was some something wrong with it. Um, the fan, I guess, needs to be replaced. It's squeaking all the time and it's just making like really loud, annoying noise. Um, but other than that, the power supply is fine. It has the right connectors for the graphics card. And speaking of the graphics card, we got a PNY GTX 760 2GB and it cost me $35 on Facebook Marketplace. I'm not exactly sure why, but the owner for some reason put screws in the DVI, DVI standoffs. And not only did they put screws in there, the screws are stripped. Meaning that because the screws were not in the right holes, it just completely messed it up so I cannot actually get it out with my own screwdriver. So it's pretty annoying. Um, the card still works though, you can still get the DVI plugs in there, you just can't actually tighten them. So total for the bill is $101, so I'm going a little bit over budget, but I'm, well, you see, I'm going to flip this PC, and in order to flip the PC, it needs to look a little bit cool, so adding an extra $5 to the budget, making this total bill cost $106. I'm adding an RGB strip just to spice things up a little bit, but other than that, we're going to go into the benchmarks and see how this PC performs. Okay, so on screen you're going to be seeing some gameplay of the benchmarks that have been recorded on the PC, and first off, this isn't exactly gameplay, but it's that way we can get a little basis for the system. All the benchmarks are going to be being compared to my main PC, which consists of a Ryzen 5 2600 at 4GHz and an R9 380X 4GB model. So maybe I'd say estimate on the performance three times, four times maybe. So let's just get into it with Cinebench R20. Um, my main PC got a score of 2784, while the $100 gaming PC got a score of 834 which is pretty good. Um, it's about, as I said earlier, about a third of the performance for like a tenth of the, mm, I wouldn't say a tenth, maybe like a, yeah, about a tenth of the price. <laughs> um, next up, we got Apex Legends, and we tested this for the main PC at high settings and for a $100 PC at medium settings. My main PC got a low of 62, a medium of 92, and a high of 135. The $100 gaming PC got a low of 33, a medium of 62, and a high of 103. So CSGO, 1080p, both PCs at their max settings. My main PC got a low of 152, a medium of 216, and a high of 290, while the $100 gaming PC got a low of 77, a medium of 110, and a high of 218. So it's pretty good. Next up is Fortnite. And in Fortnite, we had my main PC at high settings, me medium for $100 PC. And my low score was a 61, medium 77, a high of 106, while the $100 gaming PC got a low of 48, medium 61, and a high of 78. Next up is Minecraft. Minecraft 1080p max settings for both PCs. You guys can already see the score for my main PC. So we'll just skip on to the $100 PC where we got a low of 115, a medium of 219, and a high of 355. So Minecraft is running pretty good on here. It's actually getting like in the territory of my main PC within like the, t within about like 15 to 20 FPS. So it's, it's keeping up. Just benchmarking in general, I decided to do a 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme benchmark. Never done this before, so it's just gonna be like a comparing thing. Um, my main PC got a score of 3,176, but on the GPU, it got 2,950, and the CPU, 5,632. On the $100 PC, it got a score of 
1817 and the GPU got a 1756 while the CPU got a 2269. So new benchmark added to the list of stuff to benchmark with. Um, finally, I did a little bit of video editing. We took the exact same 10 minute clip and we rendered it in Premiere Pro. The main PC got a timing of 7 minutes and 54 seconds while the $100 PC got 19 minutes and 32 seconds. So you guys just saw the benchmarks. This PC is actually really good at gaming. And if you saw on the Minecraft benchmark specifically, it actually matched up pretty well against my main PC back here, which concludes with a six core Ryzen 5. And it, it just really kept up pretty good to it. So if you're doing light games like that or CSGO, then you should be able to get pretty good FPS. Um, for some reason, I did try running Rocket League on this PC, but for some reason, I just didn't load. Um, speaking of things that just didn't really work out too well with this PC, the power supply, the Antec 520 watt, it has like this weird squeaky noise. I, I'm gonna plug it in to see if it'll show, because it only shows about half the time. should hear that um, it's not too bad but it's kind of annoying um, also because this is a Dell Optiplex 390 motherboard the actual front panel IO connectors are really finicky meaning that it turns the computer on when the power supply is plugged in the power button works to turn the computer on but not to turn it off and it's just a little bit weird um, I had to Extra wise, I didn't actually need this, but I did it because I want to flip this PC. I bought a USB 3.0 to 2.0 adapter because this motherboard didn't have any 3.0 connectors. But as you can see right here, it had 3.0 slots. Anyways, um, I got really, really good deals in these pricing, and I thought, you know, be a good idea. What if? I did monthly PC builds on the channel because I've noticed in the last month or two, my highest and most viewed video, which is carrying a lot of the views, is my $200 gaming PC video where it consisted of like a Ryzen processor and whatnot. So obviously the PC building videos are doing pretty well. So I'm gonna add this up to the channel, see how it does, and I'll possibly do like monthly PC stuff. Because I have a bunch of parts, like I have a bunch of parts just chilling in my closet. In fact, hold on. This is a GTX 960 four gigabyte that I got for $50. And this is an R7290, also four gigabyte that I got for $40. So I have cards. I have an i7 back there somewhere and I'm ready to like post a bunch more build video so if that's something you'd be interested in go ahead and leave some comments down below and I can turn this into like a series um anyways that'll be it for this video if you guys enjoyed go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe if you guys want to see more stuff in the future my name is Chris thanks for watching and bye hey guys welcome back to another video today I've done it I came back a month later instead of six months and we are building another PC. I'm gonna make this a monthly series. Um, this month we're doing the $50 gaming PC. This PC has a graphics card, it has some RAM, it just, it just has stuff to game with. So we're gonna go ahead and go through the specs and prices, and yeah, we'll start off with that. Okay, so specs and reason behind getting them for the case we actually got this in last month's parts hunt it was a dell dimensions 2400 it was like a broken pc that i was given to for free so the case was free um next up is the hard drive the hard drive we got was a 160 gigabyte hard drive 7200 rpm wasn't sure if it worked i got it from the same lot and it was also free. Next up, we got a Core 2 Duo E5300, 
along with a Gigabyte G31 LGA775 motherboard and an extra 4 gigabytes of DDR2 400 megahertz memory for a whopping total of $20. <laughs> I got this from a part hunt that you guys will see later this month and it'll show like how I got it and the deal and whatnot. We also got a basic Dell generic 300 watt power supply that was about five dollars a couple years ago um the gpu that we got was the hd 7850 2 gigabyte edition and that had a six pin pcie connector so on ebay they are about two to four dollars so i got mine for free but just because i'm gonna put two dollars in the price which brings us to a whopping total of, of $47. So the build process was sort of easy. Um, what I did first was I went ahead and took the CPU, I cleaned the old thermal paste off of it, and I put the CPU in the motherboard, went ahead, put the cooler on it, and then I decided to go ahead and slide the RAM back in because I took that out while I was cleaning the CPU cooler. The RAM went in pretty perfectly and it was fine. I did notice there was a little bit of a flex on the motherboard, it's like it was sort of bent. So I thought, you know, that'll be fine when I go ahead and screw it in. Maybe it's just a cooler making it look slightly bent. So I went ahead and I put the power supply inside of the Dell case and I kind of moved everything aside. I checked to see that the front panel connectors were standard. Nope, they were proprietary. So I was kind of just hoping to God that it would work if I just plugged it in. Then I went ahead, put the IO shield inside the case and slid the motherboard in, screwing in all the screws. I did a little bit of cable management as I was preparing to put the graphics card into the PC. Went ahead and slid the graphics card in and I was having some issues with the adapter being connected to the Molex connector while also trying to fit the hard drive inside as there is no mounting spot for the actual hard drive. So eventually I got the hard drive in by screwing it into an upper dock that I believe was meant for a IO front. And from there, I was able to connect the Molex connectors and just perfectly get the Molex connectors in there with the PCIe port and everything was once then connected. Um, interesting fact, um, so when I put all the components in there, Windows wouldn't boot. In fact, nothing would boot. The PC would turn on, but I wouldn't get a post. I just took everything out and now I'm getting a post, so there's only one thing that I think this could be, which are the screw mountings, because I know sometimes if the computer is, or the motherboard is screwed in too tightly, it will just stop it from posting. So we're going to try to do a little reinstall, and hopefully everything goes fine. Um, I only installed two of the like main point screws. Like two of the ones that are make, gonna make sure that this motherboard stays down. And it's posting, so that's actually pretty good. So now I can actually screw in the rest of the system and get everything connected and we should be done here. All right, here we are with the benchmarks for a $50 gaming PC. So for the most part, we're doing 900p in the gaming benchmarks, but in some games we're able to turn the settings up to 720 or 1080 depending on the title. Um, we're only able to test four games today. I was going to do five, but for some reason Apex Legends wouldn't run. So let's get off with Cinebench R20. We got a score of 261, which is a very, very low score 
Um, usually somewhere within the like five to seven hundred range is good or okay, but considering this is only a dual core, it's not going to be great or okay at all. Um, next up, we're going to go right into Rocket League at 720p medium settings. We got an average of 69 FPS, a minimum of 46, and a maximum of 111. Rocket League was a little bit stuttery at times, but it wasn't as bad as the other games in test. In fact, the minimums were the highest out of all the other games we tested. Um, so I decided we test CSGO, because usually most, most games can run it. Nope. At 900p high settings, we got an average of 35 FPS, a minimum of 11 FPS, and a maximum of 50 FPS. I thought that this being CSGO would be pretty easy to run, but we only managed to get at around 30 FPS. I'm sure if we went to like 720p low settings, you could probably get around like 50 to 60, but the lower you go, the worse quality you can get. Next up, into Fortnite. I had low expectations seeing as how CSGO ran. So at Fortnite 900p low settings, we got an average of 40 FPS, a minimum of 6 FPS, which is while we were doing parachutes, and a maximum of 71 FPS. I couldn't actually tell if it was the hard drive or the processor, but something was holding us back from playing like the actual like battle royale. It wouldn't actually bring us into a game, it would load everything but it wouldn't bring us into the game so i did like a local match thing and creative to do that benchmark next up the game that i just knew was going to run pretty pretty well was minecraft we got an average of 140 fps unfortunately we did get a minimum of 12 fps but we did get a maximum of 269 fps so if you had like a 120 hertz monitor just only to play minecraft this would probably be fine for you Next up, we are going to be showing you guys a Premiere Pro 1080p render at exactly 10 minutes long. It took 55 minutes and 38 seconds to render. So that was obviously a long time and it it just was not a good like editing experience. It sort of reminded me back in like 2016 when I had a 2008 MacBook not the air not the pro and it would take like eight hours for a five minute video to render that's what this reminded me of finally our last benchmark was 3d mark time spy where we got an overall score of 1130 we got a graphic score of 1246 and finally we got a cpu score of 740 clearly the cpu does not come close to the GPU so obviously that is sort of the bottleneck I can imagine if we had a quad core in this PC it'd be a lot smoother so for this computer's upgradability there's not much expandability inside the PC first of all there are no extra hard drive brackets or anywhere to really mount an SSD I had to use a I believe IO tray to have that had one screw hole in order to mount the hard drive. So realistically, the first thing I would upgrade is the hard drive into an SSD. Um, the factor that the hard drive's literally hanging off by one screw, it just doesn't. It's probably not going to hold for longer than like two years. So that would definitely be the, one of the first things that I were to upgrade. Second off, the factor of the processor. This is a dual core processor on an LGA 775 platform and the next thing that I would upgrade would be I'd upgrade the processor to a Q6600 or something similar to that nature. They're about five to ten dollars on eBay usually around like six or seven on average but it would definitely make the gaming performance a lot better. That combined with an SSD would just overall improve the snappiness of the actual system and it would just make the whole like process a lot smoother.
due to the fact that the motherboard only has two dim slots you can't really add extra ram but you can just pull the ram out and add new sticks i definitely go with two four gigabyte sticks of ddr2 mostly due to the factor of in video editing it took 55 minutes to render a 10 minute video i feel like if we were to add extra ram it'd probably cut that time to about 30 35 minutes and it would really overall improve a lot of like multitasking stuff inside of the computer four gigabytes is enough for an office pc but definitely for a gaming pc it's not enough that's about it for upgrades so I think now we should get on to my final thoughts. All right, so final thoughts. Um, this PC is doing great for games like Minecraft or Rocket League. Um, it's, it, it only really does like easy to run games, but for $50, it's definitely a great price performance. For $50, you can get the Athlon 300 GE or whatever that is, which is AMD's cheapest processor. But, but for the same money, you can get something like this. Um, well, the price I found, it was really just great deals, but went ahead and pieced together this great $50 gaming PC. If you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe if you guys want to see more on the channel. There will be a build video next month, and we'll see what's in stock. Hey guys, Chris here. Um, so we're doing another like, PC build where we're doing this sort of more like vlog style. So we're gonna be building PC most of parts over there already. Um, so a little backstory for this build. Stuff's going on in my personal life. I don't know if I'm even gonna be living here. So I definitely need a PC that can kind of, um, you know, suit my needs well enough. Um, obviously my main PC back there, um, it's fine and all, but it's pretty big. So we're gonna be building more of a compact ITX style PC. So without further ado, um, let's get into this. So for CPU, I went with the Ryzen 7 2700. It's an eight core, 16 thread processor, and I got it for $100 on Facebook Marketplace. Um, that was a pretty good deal, especially considering that these go for like 150 to 160 on like other used platforms. Um, I also have this Biostar X370 motherboard. It's flash to the latest BIOS so it can support third gen Ryzen, but we're only installing a second gen Ryzen part on here, so. It's gonna be fine for my knees, especially because my main PC only has a Ryzen 5 2600. The motherboard only cost me $40, but that's because um, this RAM slot right here does not work. Now, it's actually a bent pin in there, so I bent it back and I've been having a couple like successful attempts with actually like restoring it. But as I said, um, I'm kind of like trying to figure out my living situation, which means I need to have a smaller PC. Um, so I'm putting all my inventory that I actually have for like PCs and stuff, pretty much whatever supported will be going in this PC. So I have this eight gigabyte T-Force Delta RAM. Um, it's 2666, but we're gonna overclock it, CL18. Um, now I would have had two of these, but originally when I bought this, this motherboard only had one slot that was working. Um, considering the fact that my main PC is probably gonna go into hiding for a little bit, I'm probably just gonna take the RAM out of there and put it in here. That way I can have the full 16 gigabytes. But as of right now, it's only gonna have this eight gigabyte stick, but I feel like it'll be fine for, for the most part. Um, this cooler, this is a cheap little CPU cooler. Um, it has RGB or whatever. It cost me like $10, but keeps your CPU cool enough to boot. I'm definitely gonna change the cooler because it like definitely cuts down the performance because of throttling. But I'll buy a different cooler at a different time. Right now, I just need to kind of work with what I got. CPU cooler has officially been installed. I'm gonna go ahead and tuck this in here. get some pre-cable management there all right so now we have our cpu motherboard and ram installed let's bring up the case okay so the case i got 
is this um this Goldfield ITX case. It's a pretty smallish case compared to what I normally build and stuff. I usually build like full ATX systems. Haven't really had the time to, you know, take it out of the box. Um over here is pretty bent in. I don't know if you can really like tell on camera, but it's kind of bent in. But let's go ahead and open it. Case doesn't have any side panels, so I'm pretty sure it should be fine. There we go. So this is our case. Um, it's a lot smaller than like my main PC case, but it does support ITX with a full size graphics card. And the power supply normally, there was a case that was like this, but it had the power supply right here. I didn't have a CPU cooler that could fit the height, so I went with this one. Um, as you can see here, the CPU, or the power supply actually has to go inside the case back there. So let's go ahead and like get this out of here. So really quick, um, the case has a USB 3.0 port, 2.0, Headphone and microphone reset power, so it's a pretty basic case here. Um, everything comes off like that. And we have to remove this, that way we can get to like where we install the motherboard. And then over here is where the power supply would go. I don't really know where you would mount the hard drives at, but I'll get to that when it comes, I guess. Honestly, first of all, so far, this case really isn't that bad to, like, work with. Um, let's pull these out. Cable management is probably going to be, like, the hardest part with this case. There's not really any room to, like, route anything to hide things. Like, there's no power supply basement. Um, but there's also no fans in this case at all. I might go ahead and find one and throw it in here, but... Um, Let's go ahead and get our power supply out because that needs to go here that way I can put the extender through it. Power supply I went with was an EVGA 450 watt BT. I got this for $20 on, I think it was Craigslist. Um, I got two of these that you might have noticed these in a couple other of my builds, but this is the only one I have left because I sold off a different one. But it has all black coated cables, no mustard, ketchup and red type stuff. Um, it's not modular, which is kind of sad, but I think for 20 bucks, it's definitely a good power supply because it's 80 plus. So there are actually spots where you can mount the power supply, like through the little holes down here. So we're going to go ahead and install our power supply. Okay, we got all in but one. I think this one's like stripped or something, but that's fine. It's staying in there pretty sturdy. I'm definitely seeing cable management become a real issue here. Almost forgot for a second I have to go ahead and plug this in. Because I won't have access to this when the case is turned all the way on. There we go. Okay, so the next part is we have to go ahead and install the ITX motherboard. So we're going to go ahead and do this right there. Line it up with the standoffs on the motherboard, which do seem to be in order. All right, motherboard is successfully and sturdily installed. So now we have to go ahead and connect some of these cables, don't we? Run these down the side over here. This seems like the best idea for cable management. There we go. All those are now installed. USB 3. Audio is, oh, you're also back over here. Hopefully there'll still be enough room for a graphics card with this. I think I might actually have to route these behind that. Yeah, that seems like the better approach.
All right, that's connected. There we go. Okay, so for our graphics card, we have the EVGA GTX 970 that got on EVGA's um, Midweek Madness sale for $40. Um, it works, definitely works, I already tested this. Um, so now we just have to install it. There we go. There we go, power connectors are installed. Now we just have to install the um, SSDs and hard drives and stuff. Okay, so these are the main devices I'm installing in here. I'm still not sure I'm gonna get the hard drive in here. Here. All right, um, let's go ahead and screw back in our bracket for this. There we go. Okay, so from what it looks like, we're done with the whole build process. We just have to go ahead and put the side panel on back now. Um, as you can see here, there's no like IO shield, but I don't know. That's just what that's just how it came. But cable management's okay. Everything's kind of tucked up here. Um, there's really it was a very tight fit for things like the graphics card and hard drive. SATA cable just barely makes it up here, and I don't even know if this is gonna like go all the way on because like the only thing we have left is installing the thumb screws back on. All right, PC built. Okay, so we have the PC build done. I did end up having to switch to the um, cooler because the last one that we got was just some cheap little $9 cooler. This is the Cooler Master. I don't remember the model. I don't, it's on the screen. But it costs about like $23, $24 and keeps our CPU pretty cool, cool enough to actually run benchmarks because originally the CPU with the other cooler got like, I think it was like 40% of performance. So it wasn't good, but Went ahead, bought this new cooler. Um, it's RGB. I can like change it over here. There's a little key I can press. So it gives it a little bit of light color, and I kind of like that. So yeah. Um, only thing that I don't really like about this build is the fact that it only has eight gigabytes of RAM. But as you guys can see in the benchmarks I'm about to show you, it doesn't matter. Now, obviously for benchmarks, um, I wasn't really like able to cram it all into this video because it's already past the 10 minute mark but they're all going by the screen right now and yeah so pretty pretty good for the performance one thing i would like to touch on would be the premiere pro performance that 10 minute render literally took less than a minute and a half that was crazy because compared to my main pc over there it takes about like 12 minutes for a hardcore render so that's pretty cool but yeah, um, in fact, the 8 gigabytes of RAM didn't stop this thing at all. It outperformed my main PC by a lot. And on top of that, the only thing that kind of like shows that it didn't have like as much RAM was probably the factor that um, the like lows on the FPS was pretty actually like lower than the main PC for a lot of the games. Um, one thing I would like to touch on Fall Guys. We're, this is a new game that we're adding to the benchmark list. Um, on AMD, you can you cannot uncap the FPS, so it's locked at 60. But for any sort of like NVIDIA card, you can actually uncap the FPS for that. But it's a bug, hopefully it'll be fixed soon before like next month's PC build. But yeah, this is my little like runaway system. And as you can see over here, it's about half the size as my main rig. Now, I do have four different drives hooked up. Um, they're not actually like connected to the system because I only have two SATA cables left, but I have the boot drive on here, which is actually just my benchmarking drive, so I didn't really need to add that into the system, and this one terabyte Western Digital drive. So the total, the PC costs about a hundred and or no, three two one, three hundred and fifty five dollars, give or take like an extra five or ten bucks. 
and I do like it. It performs a lot better on the main PC. It's a lot smaller. It's not like aesthetically as pleasing because it only has like one little RGB um, CPU cooler, but I think overall it's a pretty good PC, especially for the price. It outperforms my main PC at about a third of the price. So yeah, um, if you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe if you guys want to see more videos on the channel. My name's Chris, see you all in the next one, and peace. Hey guys, Chris here, welcome back to our video. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys my August PC of the month, the $150 gaming PC. Blue themed, pretty, pretty good specs, and well, I guess for the price, but compared to other videos on my channel, this PC is coming in at around $150, give or take, um, a couple extra add-on features, but yeah, so let's get straight into the specs and then jump into the build process, do some benchmarks, and show you guys how good this PC is. Okay, so I want the build process. For CPU, I chose the FX8320, and I overclocked it to 4.1 gigahertz, and it cost me $14. It went in the motherboard pretty easily, and overall, it's a pretty good mid-range CPU. Next up, I installed the RAM. It's a 2x4 gigabyte kit of G-Skill DDR3-2400 memory I got for $7. Um, the case needed a lot of cleaning, but I did want to mention that cooler that you just saw. That is not there. We were having some thermal issues with it, so I had to switch it out for a different cooler. But yeah, I had to clean up this case because this case was pretty dusty, pretty dirty. And as you can see, I am trying my best. <laughs> but this power supply I got for free in a PC parts hunt that I did last month. Um, went ahead and plugged the power supply and screwed in back into the case. Um, I went ahead and installed the I.O. shield, that way I can go ahead and put the motherboard in. Motherboard went in easily. Speaking of that, it's a $14 um, ASUS MSA97 AM3 Plus motherboard, and it's a pretty good motherboard. It's of course overclocking, which is how I was able to overclock the CPU. Um, it took a little while to get the fan screws in because um, the cooler was just like really in the way, and I also was trying to get the CPU cable in really big. Um, went ahead and pulled out the drive slot, that way I can plug in our SSD. For SSD, we actually chose the 240GB SSD from Adata. I got this specific one for $20, because it was used. But, it's a pretty good SSD and I've been using it a lot recently. So, let's go ahead, um, I was routing our cables through. I plugged in our ATX cable and our USB 3.0 cable. One with that I plugged in our audio um, front panel headers and stuff. And yeah, so next up we have to go ahead and attach our SSD to the motherboard. I plugged one end of the SATA data cable into the motherboard and routed it out through the front. And I plugged the SATA power cable into the SSD and now we just have to hook up the SATA cable to the motherboard. So, as you can see, we're doing some just precursor cable management, but next up, we have to install this graphics card. This is the R9 290 4GB edition from AMD. It's a gigabyte card, and it cost me $40 to get. So, something about this power supply, it didn't actually have any um, PSU connectors. Well, it did have a 6-pin, but I needed to also have an 8-pin, so I had to buy an adapter for that, which is fine. Um, it has 500 watts of power, so it should be good. I trust this power supply. It's not 80 plus or anything, but I've seen the brand. It's a little bit noticeable. And I tried cable managing that a little bit, but obviously on the back, that's where we're going to get the most cable management done. I got a bunch of um, zip ties and um, reusable ones from Amazon, and it fit in the case pretty well. Um, speaking of the case, this is the Corsair Carbade Spec 2. It's a mid-tower ATX case that I got for $20. And the final thing that I put in there was this 1 meter RGB strip that I got on eBay for $10. Made us some extra spice to our already blue theme build, and we were able to set the color to blue, so it was pretty good. 
Okay guys, so for benchmarks today, we're going to start off with Cinebench R20. I want to see the performance difference between overclocking and not overclocking. And without overclocking, we got a score of 1035 points. While when we overclocked it to 4.1 gigahertz, it boosted our score a lot to 1415 points. Next up is CSGO. We get an average of 153 FPS, a minimum of 81, and a maximum of 212 so it does pretty good in csgo which gives me some good hopes for like the rest of the games um another easy to run game that we tested here was minecraft at 1080p max settings we got an average of 381 a minimum of 202 and a maximum of 634 next up we have fortnite here 1080p medium settings we got an average of 104 fps a minimum of 35 and a maximum of 156 so it does pretty good in fortnite too going into rocket league we have an average of 125 fps a minimum of 103 and a maximum of 162 pretty good in pretty much every game we've tested so far um the only game that came like close to i guess not really running too well was apex legends in apex we get an average of 63 fps a minimum of 41 and a maximum of 89 if we turn down the settings in apex we could probably get the score a lot higher but at the same time that would really just bring down the quality of the actual game so I decided to keep at the settings it was at but yeah moving on to Adobe Premiere Pro I tend to do this with a lot of my systems just to see how the capabilities of video editing would work and a 1080p clip that I've tested against my main computer here. Um, we get a time of 14 minutes and two seconds, which is pretty good for something like this, like Adobe Premiere. Um, it gets kind of close to my main PC, if I'm not gonna lie. A lot of computers I've been testing recently don't really get that close, but it's been doing pretty good here. The final thing that we tested today was 3D Mark Time Spy, and we get an average of 2,072, um, we get a CPU score of 3,345, and finally a GPU score of 1,942. So this PC performs really well actually, especially for it only being $150. And in some cases, like Cinebench and stuff, it actually performs our ultimate $200 gaming PC from last month, which is pretty cool. So with that being said, let's finish off this video. Well, yeah, so this PC is actually pretty good for the price. Um, it even like gets really close to my main PC's performance. I was able to overclock this thing to 4.4 gigahertz, but unfortunately that wasn't stable, so I had to dial the overclock down to um, 4.3 gigahertz, which actually ran pretty good. It added an extra third of performance to our PC, and it was crazy. Like the Cinebench score went from a thousand to a thousand five hundred like it was that that high But yeah, so if you guys did enjoy the video go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe if you guys want to see more on the channel My name has been Chris. Thanks for watching this PC build and peace out